let's prove that the volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube. Now, to understand this uh, formula, let's imagine this is a circle with center, which is centered at 0, 0, centered at origin, and has a radius of r. So the equation of this circle, I hope you should be knowing, is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Now, this is a, any sphere can be understood as a volume of revolution. So let me explain that. Imagine this is a small strip which is infinitesimally thin. Okay, the width is infinitesimally small. And let's uh, denote that infinitesimally small thickness as dx. And your the height is y. Now, when this strip or this uh, cylinder, or oh, sorry, this rectangle, imagine this is rotated over x-axis. If you rotate this over x-axis, if you're rotating this over x-axis, what will happen? This will become a infinitesimally small disk. Okay, imagine this is an infinitesimally small disk. And with the thickness of d, dx, suppose this is a disk, imagine this is a disk, okay, has a radius of y, this is the radius of y, and has a thickness of dx. So this is a good, you can imagine this to be, you can compare this with this. Okay, so this is the disk we are talking about when you rotate this, this strip which is infinitesimally thin over x-axis, you will get a solid uh, or a cylinder. You can imagine this as a cylinder, which is infinitesimally thin. Your thickness is dy and your radius is dx. Uh, so the volume of this, so let me write this. So the volume of one disk, volume of one disk, the volume of any shape is surface area times so let me write first the volume of volume of a 3d or volume of a cylinder volume has this general formula which is cross section or area of cross section i'll write only area times the thickness times the thickness now to find the volume of this infinitesimally thin disk it is the area of this circle times the thickness. So this you can see this is area of this disk is area of circle times the thickness. And the thickness, let me write that as dx. So which is nothing but pi times your radius is y squared, pi times y squared times dx. So that is the area, sorry, that's the volume of one disk. Now if you add Suppose, let's take all the disk from 0 to R. Or if you want to find the volume of the of the sphere, it would be the integration, definite integration from minus R to R. Or you can also take the integration from 0 to R, the integration, so let me write. So the volume of the disk, so the volume of the sphere, in this case, volume of sphere, First, let me write and then I'll explain, is 2 times the definite integration from 0 to r of this function, which is pi times y squared times dx. Now, why did I write 2? So when you are doing the definite integration from 0 to r, you are adding all the disk that you can form uh, in the interval from 0 to r. So if you add all the disks from 0 to r, you will get the hemisphere, okay, or semi-cylinder, or sorry, semi-sphere, hemisphere. So I hope you understand. At at zero, the disk would look somewhat like this. So let me draw, give you understanding. So but this is the disk that will be formed at zero, okay? So this will be the disk which is formed at zero, and this is the disk which is formed at an arbitrary value x. So if you add all these disks from 0 to r, you will get the 
volume of the hemisphere and then if you times it by 2 you will get the volume of the sphere that's why I wrote 2 times uh, the integration, definite integration from 0 to r of pi y squared dx. So this is equal to, so let me take the pi out, so definite integration of 0 to r of y squared dx. Now, what is y squared? Okay, so here you can very see, clearly see y squared is nothing but r squared minus x squared. So in place of r squared, so in place of y squared, I can put r squared minus x squared. So y squared will now change. So this is nothing but 2 pi times integration from 0 to r of r squared minus x squared dx. So applying integration to both. So this is 2 pi times integration of r squared dx from 0 to r minus integration from 0 to r of x squared dx. So you can distribute the integration to both of them. So this is nothing, so this is equal to 2 pi times, now integration of a constant is nothing, so this is, uh, you can defect, factor out the r squared because r is a constant, so integration of 0 to r dx so 1, you can say 1 dx minus integration of 0 to r of x squared dx. Okay, so this will give me 2 pi times r squared. Now, integration of 1 is nothing but 1 dx is nothing but x minus uh, of this would be x cubed. Integration of x squared is x cubed divided by 3 and you have to put the limits of integration 0 to r. Now we have to substitute the upper limit and the lower limit into this function. So this is equal to 2 pi, so let me simplify this, times r squared x minus x cubed over 3, 0 to r. So let me first put the upper limit, so this is 2 pi, times, if you put r in this function, so this is r squared times r minus r cubed over 3 minus putting the, the lower limit, so this will be 0 minus 0. So 0 is not going to make any difference. So this is equal to 2 pi times, so this is r cubed, take away one third, uh, r cubed take away one third r cubed over three. Okay, now if you take one third r cubed over three, so let me simplify this. So this is two pi. So this is nothing but two r cubed over three minus r cubed over three. R cubed is same as two r cubed over two r cubed over over. Sorry. It's not 2r cubed, so let me write. Oops. Let me bring it back. This should be... Mm. So this should be... Let me use a smaller eraser. Instead of... This should not be 2r cubed. This is 3r cubed over 3. So this is 2 pi times... This is how much? 3r cubed over 3 minus r cubed over 3 is... 2r cubed over 3. And now, so this is same as, so this is 4 pi r cubed over 3, which is same as 4 over 3 pi r cubed.